Warning. This podcast may contain spoilers for whatever TV show or movie is mentioned. Please listen at your own discretion. Welcome to Viewers Anonymous. Fuck out of this shit is dead. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I am Scoots Bronson. And I am S. Dot Foster. That's right. And this is the Viewers Anonymous Podcast. What's up with you, bro? Man, listen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, we've been sitting here tripping, but yeah. uh, but yo, I'm good, man. I'm good. I ain't got no complaints, man. Just put out a pie yesterday, man. Shout out to Siege for jumping on there with me. Fire, bro. man. Fire. I listened yeah. to it today. That was a great episode. Appreciate that, man. But I'm do I'm doing good, man. Staying busy. How about yourself, man? Um, I'm doing great, man. Um, went to the gym yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Legs is hurting. It was leg day yesterday, so my legs Uh-oh. are sore. I, I've been walking like I uh I've been walking like Young Forrest Gump all day. No, don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that Yo, listen. It's funny you say that, dude. Yeah. Listen. So you text me. And you was like, you about to watch that spiral shit, right? Mm-hmm. The sauce shit. Oh, what so did you think of it? It was like, right. it was like, right. I ain't mad at it. Yeah. And and I ain't mad at the ending though, because that was because you said you was mad at the ending, yeah. but I mm-hmm. mean, but the funny th- it's funny you say that because so it start out, this motherfucker is in there talking to these people, and he start talking about Forrest Gump. And he said, Man, he said. <laughs> He said something about Forrest Gump. He said, man, Forrest Gump ain't got no sequel. It ain't no Gump, too. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was funny, man. That was a great way to start it off, though. Hey, but that was I was a great like, way to start it off. But no, only reason I said I didn't like the ending, bro, is because he went and did all that other shit when he didn't have to. The only thing he had to do, he he got he got dude's phone. He could have texted his daddy and just killed his goddamn dad. Nobody would have been none the wiser. Man, but he had to do the play the game thing, man. I mean, that's the whole part of the movie. You know what I'm saying? I want to play a game. That is true. However, I'm pissed off at it. It was a great, it was a great build up, but just like the ending was just it was fucked up. Then out of all things, they had the police shoot a black dude with a gun. Like, come on, man. It's fucked up, yeah. Kinda. Yeah, you, you ain't had when to, you look you at it that way, like that, you could have just tortured at it. my nigga. Yeah, when you look at it that way, and then you have him raise it up. Yeah, yeah man. man, like, come on, man, that's that's a little, you know. But that, the wrong but time to make it, that. But they brought it back to remember that little pig thing mm-hmm. when they when they saw that truck, that little mm-hmm. pig that was hanging from the strings, and it it pulled the one string up that had the gun in the hand. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you gotta say, I mean, it's fucked up, but it's creative at the same time. No, it was very creative. Don't get me wrong. Like for him to for him to be <laughs> the, the rookie on the team, and he was had this big ass elaborate scheme, and then the fact that all of it worked out, that shit was very creative. Yeah, and, I want to know and, how they did find out it was him the whole goddamn time. Yeah, and it was a damn copycat the whole damn time. Well, it had to be a copycat. I the knew. Thing is, no, I'm saying I didn't I'm like the about voice. the rookie. I knew it was the rookie when he supposedly died. Yeah, because it was just like his his was different. Because why why the rookie would die? Why would they go after him? Because obviously it was a reason they was going after certain people. That's it was just point. him all of a sudden. That's my yeah. point. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, damn, we don't know what we watching on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, people. My bad. Listen, hey, this is so funny, y'all. We've been tripping. Like for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes before we even got started. So we're doing Commando, man. Came out in 1985. You know what I'm saying? You got the you got the guy, one of the biggest action stars in the 80s, and uh on a Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got uh I mean all the other people, all the man, let, let's be real. The only noticeable person in here is Bill Duke, you know what I'm saying? The legend. Alyssa Milano, like, come on, like. You know, and uh, Dan, Dan Hadaya, yeah, he's noticeable, he's noticeable. And Ray yeah. Don Chong, yo, boy, still got it. 
even to this day. I don't even know. Fire. I don't even know what she look like right now. But like eighty five, no, she still yeah. looked the same. Yeah, like so. Yeah, she. But uh, I didn't know that was Tommy Chong's daughter. I thought she was Asian when I found out what her last name was. I thought she was Asian, but I didn't know that was Tommy Chong's daughter. No idea. No, that's yeah, what's you know what I'm Hey, fun fact: you know who her brother is? Well, her adopted who? brother is. Who? Hey, have you ever seen Panther? Oh, uh, you talking about uh, the the one on uh, on my man? Shit! About wow. the about the the story of the Panthers. Yeah, the dude's Why? point of view. It got Kadeem Hardison in it. It got um. <laughs> Bo King Woodbine and he all repeat, them in it. Who, he, Huey P. Newton, Huey, the one on yeah. Huey P. Newton, yeah. yeah the I dude that him. played Huey P. Newton in that? Yeah. That's her adopted brother. Wow. Yeah. Tommy Chong adopted man. him when he was like 12 or some shit like that. That's what's up. Learn something new every day. Yeah, I've seen that yeah. movie. <clears throat> but, man, listen. So, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this movie came out in 1985. This came out the same year I was born. Three so years before I, I was born. So obviously, if you watch this shit now, yeah, you know what I mean. Man, but the nah, on this hold, hey, is terrible. Hey, <laughs> 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 y'all, listen. So I'm gonna give y'all the rundown that we're getting into it because we've been tripping out over this shit. So, mm-hmm. so basically, uh, John Matrix is a retired, you know, what I'm saying Army SEAL. Uh, he did a whole bunch of like under the radar missions. You know what I'm saying? You know our government. Would do those his types of special shit. forces. Yeah, special forces. And his t- basically his team started coming up dead. And so they knew that he was going to be next. Come to find out, a dude that he kicked out the team named Bennett got together with this one dude who wants to overthrow the government where he's at. So he wants John Matrix <clears throat> to go in and get close to the uh, President Vasquez, take him out, so he could become the president. So that's basically what this movie's really all about. But at the same time, the reason, well, the only way they could get John to, well, the way they thought they could get John to do it is to kidnap his daughter and be like, yo, you do this job for you, we'll give your daughter back. Mm-hmm. So John takes the route of, I'm not doing this shit. This is 11 hour flight, so I got 11 hours to bust all y'all ass and get my daughter back before y'all kill her. So that's basically the synopsis of the movie. So this is the funny thing, dude. Like, Cindy had all the best lines in this movie, yo. Did like, she? she did, man. She did. Oh, so, man. hey, when when uh, first of all, first of all, when um, uh, uh, when, when Sully came up on the right, mm-hmm. and Sully was like, uh, like he tried to holler at her while she was on the phone. So then, the funny thing about that is she said, I like you too. I don't know yeah, if that was that, a thing. That shit was funny. I don't know if that was a thing in the 80s, but you don't just tell somebody, oh, I like no, you too. You knew this was the 80s, nigga. He was smoking a cigarette in the airport. No, dude. They walked on the plane and didn't even really get checked, my guy. Like, they just like, at all, bro. <laughs> you know, it was so different back then. Man. And so she, he's like, he said, yo, you don't know what you're missing. She said, from here, it looked like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, then, no, all time, when they in the car, and no, this is the funny part, and I don't even know if you noticed this shit. Mm-hmm. So, when Sully pulled out, and he was like, follow them, and she was like, oh, I knew you was going to say that. When she backed out, if you look at the car, you can see the cameraman <laughs> in the car. Not nah. in the car, but you can see his reflection in the damn door of the nah, car. Man, yeah. missed, that shit is fucking funny. I tell you what I did notice, though, that on the Schwarzenegger, big ass took the seat out the car and was still her goddamn hype <laughs> in the car. <laughs> I'm like, bro, how big is this nigga, man? Hey, so dear, so dear, I just want to get this one line out, but this shit killed me, man. I'm telling you, she had the best line. So, so they riding. And she was like, what is this all about? Because she was like, are you going to kill me or something? And he was like, no. She was like, would you tell me if you was? And he was like, yeah. And so she was like, uh, so he started telling her that they wanted um, the men from his old crew want him dead. Mm-hmm. Yo, she said, 
She I said, was I can understand too. that. <laughs> she said, I've only known you for five minutes and I want you dead too. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, but that shit tripped me out. Yeah. But, but that was fucked though. up though what she did though, man. She oh, snitched man. on my nigga. She snitched on him. But that but it gave us one of the best lines in the movie though. What? So my man said, yo, he said, like, Yeah, hey, we got this uh I got this situation. I got this oh, wacko. He said I might have a wacko over here. He was like, he said, I'm gonna need some backup. He that man him, got on the mic. He got on the radio. He said, no, he, that ain't that ain't the best part. When he was like, "You guys want to see me whoop some ass?" No, nah, that yeah. ain't the best part. The best part he was like, "We got a six-two big buff brown-haired muscular motherfucker over here." I was like, hey, "What?" He said, he said, <laughs> "I was like, what?" He said, "He said, hey, he said, I'm gonna need backup." He said, "I got a six-two brown hair. He's one gigantic motherfucker." <laughs> Hey, man, listen, let me tell you something about this movie, bro. Okay. I understand that Arnold Schwarzenegger was the action star of the 80s, right? Or one of the action stars of the 80s. Mm -hmm. But, bro, come on, bro. They had my nigga doing shit that (laughs) that nobody was doing in real life, bro. I get it. This nigga was Mr. Olympia and all this other shit. Cool, bro. But the first time we see this nigga, this nigga is walking through the desert. Not the woods, not the forest, the desert with a fucking tree on his shoulder and a chainsaw. Yeah. A whole, not a, okay, when I say a tree, people, I literally mean a fucking tree. This nigga got a big ass log on his shoulder carrying it down a goddamn mountain, bro. What the fuck is going on in this movie? The shit that Arnold Schwarzenegger was doing, bro, it was just like, it didn't make sense. He, he, he got shot at. I don't know how he dodged the bullet, but then he crushed the telephone booth, ripped it out the wall, lifted it up, and then body slammed it while dude was in there, while Sully was in there. Then, not only that, he flipped the car over. This yep. nigga swung from the top of a, uh, the top of the mall to on top of the elevator. I don't know how he just made that calculation that fast. But he, he landed perfectly <laughs> on top of the elevator. I mean, like, this nigga was doing shit. No, this is my favorite part, right? So um, when he gets on the plane, when he gets on the plane, you know what I'm saying, after they done, after they done follow him to the house or whatever, um, they got his daughter. And this nigga was getting on the plane. I mean, he was leaving the plane. He said he had to go to the restroom. Before he did that, he had a dude on there that was following him. So he <laughs> he yawned or something, and then he elbowed this nigga, put this nigga in the headlock, broke his neck, laid him back with a pillow and a blanket. Nobody <laughs> knew <laughs> nothing this nothing. shit was going on. <laughs> Nobody noticed none of this shit was going on. So my man is literally in the seat dead. <laughs> <laughs> with a pillow and a blanket and a hat over his face. So my nigga said, I got to go to the bathroom. So the lady was like, sir, you can't go to the bathroom. Uh, he said, you can't go to, she said, you can't go to the bathroom while the plane's moving. All he did was look at her and said, I'm sick. <laughs> she just let this nigga go. <laughs> so <laughs> this nigga somehow gets in the back, gets to wherever he's going. He don't go to the bathroom. He finds a way to get into um into the cargo bay. Mm-hmm. So the nigga get into the cargo bay. Now, this is this is another one of my favorite parts. The cargo bay has this like I don't know if it's a sheet or whatever type of fabric. Th- it was thick ass fabric, whatever it was, was in front of the goddamn where the wheel go. Mm-hmm. This nigga poked his fingers through it. Yeah, <laughs> how strong is this motherfucker, man? How strong is Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't use nothing to poke it. Nothing. It wasn't no holes in this motherfucker. He put his fingers through that motherfucker. <laughs> down, bro. Then he climbed down the wheel as the plane was going. So he's holding on to the wheel of the plane. The plane is taking off. This nigga jumps off of the wheel into like a marsh or whatever the fuck that was, like a little lake or pond that was in front of it. Now, this is the thing. From where he fell to where he landed was a long-ass drop. 
He should have busted a leg, a hip. Something should have happened to this nigga. Because that goddamn thing wasn't that deep. Soon as he fell, he came right back up, bro. They landed in the grass part of it. He dude. basically landed like in, in a three foot pool. This nigga, <laughs> this nigga was doing some amazing shit in this movie, man. Hey, but this is dude, but this would kill me though. You didn't even notice. Look at everybody from his team. He the only mm-hmm. fit one. But nigga Bennett, <laughs> this nigga had a dad bod, bro. With and this nigga had a, a, a chain bod. tank top. A chain this tank nigga, top. And he had a chain link tank top for him. I said, what the fuck kind of villain is this? This nigga was a gay villain. This nigga was a gay 80s villain, bro. When the nigga popped up, when the nigga popped up, I thought I thought he it looked like he came off the set of Michael Jackson's bad video, bro. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at that shit, bro. I'm like, why the fuck do he got that tank top on? And at first, I just thought it was like a great tank top until he got the moving and I heard it and I looked again. I said, this nigga got a chain link tank top on with a t-shirt underneath. I said, bro, there's no way this nigga was in the military, bro. Hey, but he said, John said, John said, I will be back, Bennett. He said, oh, come on, bro. I'll be waiting, John. No, <laughs> the fact like, that yeah. that nigga said, I'll be back, I'm like, come on, fam. Really? Hey, that was... I can't remember. Is that before or after? I think that was before Terminator. It might have been. Why are you looking? Dude, no, why? it was after Terminator. Oh. Because Terminator was 1984. That's why I was like, yeah, that was that was just hey man, and we gotta we gotta we gotta work on him having like these names. He be having the worst fucking action hero names. John Matrix. John Matrix, remember whose last whole name Matrix? is Matrix? Yo, he's and then he's from East Germany. Listen, man, <laughs> I'm gonna give you the nick. I'm gonna give you just some names of his, some of his action hero names. Uh oh, Adam Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> he was Adam Gibson in the Sixth Day, right? He uh, was. This is the only one that sounds like an '80s hero. In the last action hero, he was Jack Slater. That sounds like an action hero yeah. name. Yeah. In Predator, he was just Dutch. Um, hold on, let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to find some more because it it uh, it gets it it's it don't make no sense, bro. It makes no sense as to why this nigga has had the names that he's had. The last stand, his name was Ray Owens, but I think that was based on a real person, wasn't it? Could have been. I'm not um, sure. I think it was. Okay. Uh, the Expendables. The nigga name was Trench. That that fits. That works. You like that? Yeah. I ain't mad. I ain't mad at that. I mean, I ain't saying okay. it like I like it. I'm not saying it's the best, but yeah. Collateral damage. Uh-huh. Gordy Brewer. <laughs> Yo, we gotta stop. <laughs> we gotta stop, man. <laughs> Hey man, hold on. I got one more for you. I got one more for you, bro. Oh my god. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I know it's another one in here. Oh yeah, in total recall that in total recall that nigga was Quaid. <laughs> Oh man, yo, these boys tripping. Yo, so I was telling you before we started, I was like, yo, for 1985, I was like, yo, the script wasn't bad. Nah. So, so then, so very movie starts. So this is how the movie starts. You see a uh, trash truck. You know, what I'm saying old school truck with you know with two dudes on the back. So this is my thing. Wakes my man up, honey. That sounds like the trash truck. It it usually come on Tuesday. So if it ain't Tuesday, yo, I'm not getting out my bed for number one and sliding the trash cans down here. Because they didn't notify me and told me that, Thanks. you know what I'm saying, that they changed Thanks. the trash day. So he comes, bring the trash cans down, and my man say, guys, I didn't want y'all to miss me. My man say, oh, we won't. 
fucking lit them up. Shot this yeah. nigga in the goddamn street. Now, I got a question. He was a part, he was one of the dudes that was in the um in Judge team. Yeah. That nigga wasn't in shape either. And then he looked old as fuck. Facts. Even Kirby didn't even look that old. Nah. Not as old and as Kirby old. is like a, a straight up commander, like that was uh Lawson. It was just weird how old he was. Like I think that was a bad casting job mm-hmm. for him. But like and even and even when, when Cook went to uh even when Cook went to steal that car, he gets in there, he cranks it up, and he was like, You know what I like best? My man said, What? The price. And then stole the car. I'm like, yo. I was like, hey, whoever wrote this shit? Hey, this shit was great for the fucking 1985. Can we, can we talk about how great Bill Duke is, though, bro? Bill like, Duke is all time, but that fight scene was crazy. That fight scene was the shit. That, to me, I think that was one of the best fight scenes in the movie. But uh, Bill Duke is, is one of the greatest, bro. Like, this nigga is literally, to me, this nigga is goaded, bro. Like, for him to be in as many fucking movies and and have that, I mean, he he the only nigga that looked like Bill Duke. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like he got he, you know what I'm saying. He has that unique face, but not even that. Like the nigga been doing shit for thirty years. Yeah, like yeah. that's a long but, fucking time. But man, come on! But the all time though. I don't care nobody say. So you bought the beer mm-hmm. at 9 p.m. He was like, Yeah, like Ron, not yet, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, about 9 p.m. So then he's <laughs> you like, No, you don't fuck so, up, right? <laughs> no, no, he didn't get him yet. He <laughs> said, you know you don't so, fuck then he up, said, right? so he was like, So <laughs> wait a minute. So you're telling me you bought the beer at 11 p.m. Yeah, I, I I think yeah, uh uh yeah 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 it was about eleven. No, you're not fucked up, right? <laughs> no, you're not fucked up. Cause you said nine o'clock. <laughs> they said nine o'clock. Hey, that's the all time, man. That is the all time. But I was just like, and he wasn't even really in that movie. But nah. that scene, you remember it? Yeah, Bill you Duke in National Security was funny. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the roles that you know what I'm saying. I appreciate it from Bill hey, Duke. Get rich or die trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Bill Duke is that man, bro. Yeah, yeah, man. Like he, he, you know, he's kind of like that Loretta Divine, yo. Like yeah. he was never like the main guy, yeah. but he always stood out. He always mm-hmm. stood out in whatever he did, man. And yeah. then, like, obviously, the Predator. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. He, he did a I lot of movies on the on first nigga. Yeah, I think they were cool. I think they had but, like. But I'm gonna tell you this too, though. I think that nigga really knew martial arts. Cause this ain't the first movie where he was actually like doing the fighting scene and actually, you know what I'm saying, looked like he knew what the fuck he was doing. Yeah. And like I say, Cindy had the best line when they were oh, no. fighting. Question. Hey. Okay. The fight, the fight between <laughs> Matrix and Cook, right? Uh-huh. When Matrix knocks Cook through the door. Mm-hmm. And then <laughs> Titties. Nah. <laughs> Shout out to the titties though, but nah. What was they doing under that cover? Because <laughs> he was backwards. <laughs> that nigga was on all fours. I caught that. I caught that too. I caught I'm that. Like, I'm like, because she jumped up first he and he looked up and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, what was, <laughs> what was going on here? Well, yeah, I don't do. I don't know what sex position that was, man. But that was, was some weird, some freaky stuff. Yeah, that was some weird eighty stuff right there, yo. Yeah. But yeah, that was funny. But I did notice that. Yeah. And like, but when they was fighting, and Sydney said, "Man, these guys eat too much red meat." <laughs> then she she behind the thing hiding, talking about enough of this macho bullshit. What are you talking hey, about, lady? Hey, that shit was hilarious, but right? I'm telling you, but and then and then like when when they when they killed Cook, and mm-hmm. then they went out. And, and um, he took he found his keys. He was like, "We'll take Cook's car. He won't be needing it." <laughs> another oh, another question. One more question. I got I got I got a bunch of questions for this one. Uh, in the midst of everything that was going on, right, with the trail okay. of chaos that Matrix was leaving behind, 
Yes. The police only found them one time. Yo, hold on, hold on. I'm glad you brought that up. So when they was leaving, after he said the great line of, I'm going to take Cook's car because he won't be needing it. Mm -hmm. She's like, where are we going? This dude say shopping. (laughs) So this is what kills me. You want to talk about over dramatic? Where the hell did you find this bulldozer? And how did you find the keys? (laughs) He finds a bulldozer out of nowhere, breaks in, you know what I'm saying, and starts getting... I'm talking about all the army weapons you can find. This dude find it wasn't everything. No alarm. It wasn't no alarm, no alarm or nothing. nothing. It must have been a solid alarm because how did them police come and then they got a paddy wagon, my guy? Man, listen. I already knew the police was coming when he found the damn bulldozer. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, no, no. This is another question I had too. Okay, so remember when he jumped? I know I'm going back, but remember when he jumped from the plane, right? Uh-huh. Now, did you see the watch he had on? Yeah. There was no way that watch was making that noise. What you mean? D- he set his watch for 11 hours, right? Yeah. And it said, beep, but it was super loud. But then when it started counting down, it started going, boop, boop. Boop. I'm like, bro, there's no way that old ass watch has a sound speaker that loud or that uh, that nice to where it's gonna sound like that, bro. Man, I've had I've had before. I've had watches like that before, and they've never sounded like that. Man, because you didn't get them from the military. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Ain't no way that watch is gonna sound like that, man. The sound effects, the sound effects overlay in 1985, bro, is. Second to none, bro. I'm telling you, even when they punch somebody, that shit, bro. Hilarious. When they was, when they was, when they had, when him and Bennett had the knife fight at the end, yeah, <laughs> and they was making a cutting sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why is that necessary? You don't need a sound to let us know you cut them. Just show the cut mark. How you <laughs> cut somebody? Blood come out with the knife clean. Clean as hell. Man, that's the cleanest knife I've ever seen, man. Man, damn. What was that? Oh, 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 oh. So, so they <laughs> damn, um, so he gets everything he needs and then turn around, freeze. So then he walks out, no handcuffs. Because he was good. He cooperated. So they just put him right in the back of the paddy well, wagon. Well, as you, as you know from the mall <laughs> scene, um, apparently, Multiple cops can't touch him at one time, or he'll go ah and they'll all fly back. <laughs> that was funny, dude. This dude threw off, I know, 14 cops bro, had all to at be, one time. Bro. Had to be, bro. There's no <laughs> way Arnold Schwarzenegger is that strong, man. Listen, I'm like, yo, I mean, th- that was the whole point of it, man. Like, they had to make it overly dramatic, you know what I'm saying? He, threw a, like, he, he broke off a pipe. <laughs> you a pipe to a nigga, man. What are you talking about? And then he said, let off some steam. Baby. Come on, man. He killed Benny by throwing a pipe with a bad arm. He got shot in the arm. He had a bad arm and threw a pipe through a whole human being with a dad bot. There's no way, bro, that would have ever happened. And then it went on <clears throat> and let out the steam. Yo. All man, time. Man, all the time. So, no. So, I got to finish this. So, old girl, you know what I'm saying? She's still, she still in Cook's car. She pulls up beside the police. And then the police start hollering at her. So, she give him a smile. And then and then what kills me, he goes straight to she's a hooker. How many hookers, you know, oh, driving around in a blue Cadillac? I thought he said she's a looker. I thought he said hooker. Okay. I, I mean, it know. could be looker. I I thought I thought he said hooker. Okay, I thought the, I thought he said she's a looker. I'm about to say because if she said if he said she's a hooker, I was about to be saying God dog. No. I know, and it's like damn, you go straight to that. Yeah. So then the light turns green. Hold the on, police. Hold up. How that? How didn't he see all that military shit in the back seat? <laughs> yeah. She got a whole rocket launcher just sitting there. It was guns, grenades. Uh, ammunition, all that in the back seat. And he, man, she wasn't that pretty. 
Not to know there's a fucking rocket launcher in the back seat. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, come on, man. Hey, it depends on what mine you're using, man. He was using the other one. Nah. So, <laughs> so then they pull off. She stands up, put the rocket launcher on her shoulder, mm-hmm. let one off. But mm-hmm. she got this bitch backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so the rocket goes behind them. Mm-hmm. And then she turns it around and it goes perfectly. She shoots it off. It shoots throws the her in the back seat yeah. and it hits the back tire. Another, and question. The truck crash. Another question. First time she shot it, she didn't fall forward. Nope. Second time she shot it, she fell back. Where's the logic in that? That don't even make sense. Now, <laughs> now all of a sudden, she can't h- handle a rocket launcher. Yeah, when she let out the first shot, fine, but the second shot, yeah, man, throw her back. She should have so, busted her shit on that first shot. She should have because that would have been the one that really got her. Because she don't know where the blow back is. The goddamn front seat. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes it even greater, dude. So. Man. No, because we ain't even we ain't even speak on the best part. We just skip right over that. Mm-hmm. So when they was in the airport, when they was when he was first getting put on the plane, mm-hmm. so he tell like Sully tells joke. He was like Sully. He was like he's like you're a funny guy, Sully. He said that's why I'm gonna kill you last. <laughs> okay. So fast forward to the middle of the film. There's a car chase. They knock they knock Sully down, and then so. He grabs Sully out the car and he's asking him where his daughter was. So he's holding Sully over the fucking canyon. He was and then he lets go. He's holding just he's like Sully. No, 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 no. He's holding him with he's holding with with one hand. One hand. He got a whole human being on his left hand. Yeah, full body able man. Holding him over the ledge. Yeah. He was like, he was like, Sully, you better tell me this is my weak (laughs) hand. And so Sully tell him something and then he was like Sully you remember when I told you I was going to kill you last he was like yeah you did say that I lied <laughs> and then he dropped him and dropped okay. now this so, is the second time this is the second time we see the stunt dog falling yeah so then she's like because he wrecked the car her car so she was like now we don't have a car so he goes over basically one hand push a whole Porsche 911 over he was like now we got a car but the all time part so he goes and do a three point turn. When he turns around, the whole driver's side of the car is brand new. <laughs> Come on, man! After he done rammed into it a thousand times. After time. he done rammed into it a thousand times, it's like yo, the the shit that they just let slide in movies, man. Because no, I don't know if it was just slide in this movie because it was all <laughs> kind of stupid shit going on in this movie, man. Yo, okay, we got to get to it, man. Wait a minute. I was try- Wait a minute. Uh-uh. Okay. He gets on the island, right? So he's setting off the claymores and shit and the bombs or whatever detonating go off. The two dudes walk up on him. They about to shoot him with their guns. He throws two knives, two knives. with one hand. With one hand. Well, now, he, what- he had he had one in the left and one in the right, though. Oh, okay, I thought it was with one hand. Okay, it was no, two hands. It was two, two hands. hands. Cool. This is my question. It hit both of the dudes. One knife each hit both of the dudes. They yep. both died. However, one hit the first dude on the right in the throat. Yep. Dude <laughs> on the left, he just got hit in the chest. How he died? <laughs> like, man, <laughs> man, this is what kills me. Well, well the, the logical thing would be like it hit him in the heart. But... The you thing that killed me. He just died like that, <laughs> bro. Like that's listen. This is what I'm talking about, bro. With '80s action movies, bro. Some of the stuff that that we've seen in '80s action movies, bro, is realistically not possible. Like if a dude threw a knife at your chest, right? You don't mm-hmm. instantly die right then and there. Like you don't go and then just fall out and die. It's gonna take you a minute to die. Well, I mean, dude, think about when he got shot with the tranquilizer. He was out that quick. Yeah, he was. I forgot about that. <laughs> he got shot with his sleeve. <laughs> yeah. None yeah. of this shit makes sense, man. No. None of this makes sense. Okay, we got to get to it, man. Listen. Oh, my goodness. And I didn't, I didn't notice this shit until last night. I done mm-hmm. seen this movie. I don't know. I know this was your first time. I done seen this yeah. movie about 50 times, dude. 
So he was setting – he's put all the claymores down. And the one thing that kills me is he got this one gun. There's like 30 people. Nobody <laughs> hit him. 17,000 bucks in that motherfucker. Nobody hit him one time. So no, he's running. Man. He never reloaded the gun, bro. <laughs> never reloaded that one he gun. He never reloaded a gun in none of these movies. So then he starts letting off the claymore. Listen, my guy. When he blew up one of the buildings, dude, they had, you can see where they had, uh, I'm about to say, dude, when you can see where they had, uh, uh, what do you call them? Thing? Mannequins on sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I told you the, the, the stunt dog, man. The stunt dog was everywhere in this movie, bro. They needed to get that man a piece of the action. The stunt yo, dog was the star of the movie. Yo, I'm talking about all these mass explosions are going off, and you can just see these mannequins still standing there after it's exploded, mm-hmm. and you can see the stick behind them. That's that's holding them up. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, dude, no. Let me tell you the hilarious. let me tell you the greatest. This this might be one of the greatest editing moves of all time. So in the beginning, when he was chasing them down the hill, and he had, he was pushing the the, the uh, truck to chase them down the hill. Okay, so you know the first time when they looked to the left and he was like, he's coming down the hill, he's coming to get us. And then yeah. they went past him. Okay, you, now the second time he said, look, he's coming back down the hill. He's still coming down the hill. And they showed it again. That's the same scene cut in half. Hey. <laughs> no, well, it's funny. That's literally the same scene <laughs> cut in half, bro. What you can see, you can see that it's another dude in the car. Uh, clearly. But, then, but then when they flipped to him, you can just see <laughs> yeah. man listen this this man jumped out of the back of a burnt exploded uh uh police paddy wagon he got to the car no injuries no scrapes no nicks no nothing but he was smoking true <laughs> hey, hey man wow this shit this shit is all time but man no but when he so when he finally did get shot, mm-hmm. he gets shot one time. So he goes into this barn, goes into the barn, and so he's looking around. And this guy, I mean, obviously you could say he is a, a gardener, so he got all this mm-hmm. shit in there. So they lit this building up. So one dude tell him to open up the door. He opened up the door. John Matrix now grabbed a damn. Uh, we uh, a saw mm-hmm. threw it at my man head, and you can see <laughs> you can see that top gets peeled off. I'm like, yo, but they is wilding, but he done hit my man with an axe and the balls. I'm like, come on, man. man. Listen, bro. He grabbed he grabbed Cook by the balls. Yeah, he did when he picked, he him, up picked him up. Him. <laughs> man, listen. <bro. laughs> Oh my goodness, bro! This movie, this let me tell you something about this movie, bro. In the 1985 year, for this movie to come out and people to be in in shock and awe of this movie, lets me know we've come a long way in technology. We've come a very long way in technology. Man. I don't think The Rock could have ever did this movie. Nah. Nah, yeah, it, 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 it could ever do this movie. It was just, it was just, it was different. It was right, a different. The Rock was getting his ass with them Hobbs and Shaw, so I yeah. know he couldn't have did Commando because there nobody could beat up on a Schwarzenegger. If The Rock was in a movie with a bunch of niggas with dad bods, bro, this that movie had been over been about fifteen minutes. Yes, so. You started a theme, man. So I just so you you brought up we not mentioned it a few times. Mm-hmm. So 1985, right? Yeah. So we got the Breakfast Club. Okay. We got uh Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Okay. The Last Dragon. Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Fright Night came out that year. Friday the thirteenth, the beginning, well the new beginning, so that's part five. Rocky, Rocky, is this Rocky Four? Yeah, Rocky Four. The color purple. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'm trying to see. They got Silverado. 
No, nah, so you find... looking up you looking up the wrong movies. You oh, need... Rambo First Blood. No, I two. got you. I got you. We we gonna find these right here, right? So it's action movies of 1985. Yeah, so you got the go best one. The best action movie that year, of course, was The Last Dragon, hands down. Um, 007, A View to Kill came out. Uh, you said Rambo First Blood Part Two, Invasion USA. Yep, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome came out. Um. Arnold Schwarzenegger had another movie that year called Red Sonja. Um, American Ninja. Runaway Train. Uh, Jackie Chan had The Protector. He had Twinkle uh, Twinkle Little Stars too, Jackie Chan. Yep. Charles Bronson came out with Death Wish 3. Uh, Chuck Norris came out with Invasion USA. And Code of Silence. Right, and right, right. Uh, Mission in Action 2. So, yeah. I would say, I mean, when you look at the action movies, like, obviously, this one and Rambo would have to be the most overly dramatic movies to come out that year. I don't know, man. I think Death Wish 3 might have that. You ain't never seen the Charles Bronson movie? No, nah, I never got into the Death Wish movie. Yeah, Charles Bronson was uh he was a cold piece, man. <clears throat> I I've heard of him, but I yeah. never like sat down and really watched one. But I mean, look, with all that, look, we, we had fun like laughing around <clears throat> about the shit. But at the end of the day, like the script for, for 1985, it was a really good script. Like the story, you know what I'm saying, it made sense. Now there was a lot of overly dramatic things that happened, but I mean, for this guy um, to want John to get close to this uh, President Vasquez guy mm-hmm. and to take him out so he can overthrow, because he said that the country needs basically a leader like him with discipline, because he was saying that the country that, that he's staying in needs more discipline, so he wants the new uh, the president to be taken out so he can fill in for him. And then for him to take Bennett to be like, look, we're going to kill your whole team, and the reason I'm using you is because he kicked you out. So yeah. that's the one thing they never gave us. They never told us why he kicked um, why he kicked Bennett out. I mm-hmm. guess Bennett was just too <clears throat> too overly Germanic, I'm guessing. Like, you, Bennett looked like a dude that just didn't follow the rules. He looked like he was a, a head case. Like he was just Man. go off and just do you know, You know what Bennett looked like? Bennett looked like he did what you bought with Bo King Woodbine then it uh dead president cut a dude head off and put his put it in the book bag. Bennett looked like a Raiders fan. That's how he was dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Bennett had bad fashion sense. That's what Bennett was. Man, Bennett very was bad. Man. Yeah, Bennett was on some bullshit. Bennett looked like he was going rollerblading when all this shit was said. <laughs> <laughs> Rollerblading with the short never short. got killed by that pole, bro. That nigga would have been going rollerblading. Oh man! And then, like, for John to be out in the straight mountains mm-hmm. with his daughter, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, and then he gave the background on the daughter because I was watching it and I forgot because I was like, "Yo, like, what her mama at, yo?" But then yeah. when he was in the car talking to Cindy, she said that he well, he told her that she died giving birth to her. And so he gave this whole rundown about all these places where he was doing all these special missions and where she was. He had her in all these different schools and all that type shit. So he was trying to be or uh, stay retired so that he could take care of her. Yeah. Like that was his whole mission. But oh, oh, I gotta bring up another thing. I hate to do this to this movie. So when they was in Cook's car, she found a receipt for mm-hmm. jet fuel. And she was like, oh, yeah, I know about this place. I'm training to get my pilot's license. And this is where we refuel it. So then they get into this plane. After these two dudes with machine guns shooting mm-hmm. at one plane. 
Don't hit nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so he he found he's shooting at them, they shooting at him, then he finally hits them and then they fall into the water. Mm-hmm. So she gets in the plane and she's like, yo, this plane is older than me. And so she don't even really know how to fly it. He has to help her hit the thing so they would to finally take off. And then all of a sudden everything is smooth sailing from there. Yeah. But Man. you just miraculously meet a girl. Mm-hmm. You don't even meet her. Like the only reason you, you even kidnapped. dealing with this girl, you kidnapped her because Sully was talking to her. Yeah. This is like, can you imagine you 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 are uh a whatever flight attendant, whatever. Mm-hmm. You get off and you about to just chill. And this person is just hollering at you. You like, yo, I don't even want to give you the time of day. It's and now all of a sudden, <laughs> it's safe to say at the end of this movie, she has Stockholm syndrome, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, because then she ends up getting with him. Th- no, this is the funny. This is another funny part in the movie. At the end of the movie, right? And he saved his daughter. You know what I'm saying? He leaving. Him and Kirby talking. Kirby like, you know what I'm saying? I want you to get, you know what I'm saying? I want you to get a team together, man. Come back. And he like, nah, man, I don't think that's ever going to happen. So he was like, yeah, until there's a next time. And he looked back. He was like, nah. And then they walk off. Now, no, they no, walk no. into he, Stevie. No. He says, no chance. Yeah. <laughs> He walking to Cindy, right? Cindy hops out the plane, run through the water to the to the beach. You know what I'm saying? She waiting for them. When they get there, Jenny hugs Cindy as if they've known each other for the <laughs> longest time. <laughs> Nigga, you've never seen this woman a day in your life. Why are you hugging this woman as if you know her? Yo, she like, yo, you with my dad, so you found. She didn't even know who the woman was. She knew nothing about Cindy. This is their first time ever seeing each other. Now she Cindy know all about Jenny. Jenny don't know nothing about no damn Cindy. All she knows is this lady just hopped off of this plane that we going to. Why are you hugging and kissing me? Hey, but that is hilarious. Cause I thought the same thing. It's like, yo, like why are you hugging this woman? I can see why this woman hugging you, but like yeah, why you just comfortable, even... you just comfortable with that? Like you, you cool with that? You don't even know who this lady <laughs> is, man. It's I don't know, man. It's a lot of weird stuff. Like in the beginning of this movie, when they was doing the daddy daughter thing and they kept kissing, I was like, Man, that's kind of weird. Yeah. And then no, what jerks me out is <laughs> she give him a sandwich. Now, first of all, this dude is six two. Bot got down 275 and nice. you give him some kind of damn sandwich. And then, and then he was like, What is in this? She says, You don't want to know. He just ate that <laughs> for anyway, bro. He just ate it anyway. Yo, but listen, hold on, listen. Time out. how do you how do you go from going to get ice cream to just eating a sandwich like that? Dude, well, we don't know the timing, man. I mean <laughs> There's so many things about this movie. I have so many questions, bro. I got, hey, a, lot, I got a lot of questions, man. Hey, she told Alyssa Milano told that motherfucker. He said, uh, your dad is uh doing what you know what we want him to do. You'll be back with him soon. Wouldn't you love to see that? She said, nah, I would love to see, love to see him kick smash your ass. <laughs> she said, I would love to see him smash your face in. Like, hey, man. Bro. Hey, but this this movie is a trip, but I'm telling you. But I mean, with it being a trip, it's only a trip because we're speaking on this movie in 2022. Yes. Like if y'all seen this movie like when I seen it in the early 90s. It don't it didn't seem so far fetched. Yeah, because it's like, yo, that's what the movies were like. Like Yeah. But it's like now, like now you, you said as a kid, you would believe that Arnold Schwarzenegger could do that shit. Yeah, because you also gotta think that, about it. And at I'm the like, time, he was the man to be able to, like, he was really the man to do that shit, too. Yeah, and, and that was, you know what I'm saying, my 12-year-old size. So it's just like, you know what I mean? You, you, you I mean, obviously, I wasn't next to him, but, like, really, at that time when you're young, like, everybody's pretty much giants. You know what I'm saying? If you're around mm-hmm. a bunch of adults, like, everybody's huge. So it's just like, you, this stuff, it seems obtainable. Like, it seems like it's real. Not necessarily mm-hmm. real, but but like it, it, it was just oh shit! I just saw breaking news. Um, but it was for 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 the time that it came out, and for you to go back, and if you're an action 
person. I mean, now yeah. action is just like, oh my god. I mean, if if if, if you watch any of the Fast and the Furious movies, especially after, I would say after the second, after, movie. not really, not well, really. Tokyo Drift. Uh, yeah, I would say after Tokyo Drift, then it got like, yo, these mothers out here wilding, yo. So, I mean, for the time that it came out, I'm glad that we did this because it's just like, you know, the dual movie, because the only other movie we did from the 80s was The Last Dragon, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Um, action movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean... A lot of it's far fetched, but when you're young, it seems like you know what I'm saying you're just looking at some dope shit when you watch mm-hmm. it. If you when you're young, so if if y'all watch this movie after we did this podcast, like you obviously you'll see what we're talking about. But if you, because I always say if you put yourself in the '80s, if you're around our age, you put yourself in the '80s. It's like yo, this shit is dope as fuck. But we gotta point out the shit that's funny though too, because well, yeah, it's like. Sure. But you also you also got to remember too, man. In the eighties, you know what I'm saying? Like, action movie stars were like the thing. Like now, you know what I'm saying? You got a few of them, but you don't have them like when we had them. Like we yeah. had, uh, man, we had um <clears throat> Arnold Schwarzenegger, John Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal. We had um Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone. You know what I'm saying? Like um, we we had a a bunch Carl of Carl Weathers. Yeah, Carl Weathers, Jackie Chan, Chuck Norris, um, Bruce Lee. Well, well, hold on. Wait I said Bruce Lee died? was dead by then, wasn't he? Was he dead? Yeah. Well, I think he died early eighties. Because yeah, Brandon I Lee, I think he, I think he died before the eighties. Was it? Uh, yeah, Bruce Lee died in seventy three. Oh damn! Yeah, it was that far back. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. I think he died before the eighties. Okay. But, um, I mean, you but... had like you know what I'm saying. You had guys like Jim Kelly that was out around that time, like late seventies, mm-hmm. early eighties. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm trying to think who was the who was the black action hero? Wesley Snipes. No, he wasn't in the eighties. He was the nineties. Yeah, he um, was more nineties. Uh, what's Fred the Ham? Nope, that was the seventies. God damn, was it? Nah, it wasn't Shaft. That was the seventies too. Yep. Hold on, we gotta look this up. Trying to think of some some other damn dudes from the eighties. I mean, that I mean, was the main ones though. Yeah, them was the main ones. Like those were the really ones that was. It really wasn't a lot. Like if you think about it, like John Claude Van Damme, he had blood sport and all that. Well, I mean, I guess you could blood say sport and the kickboxing. Yeah, I guess you could say Eddie Murphy was kind of one of them. Yeah, in a way, because uh, uh, Forty Eight Hours and Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah, so you know what I'm saying. Eddie Murphy was one of them. Um. Trying to think who else. Uh, shit, really, that was really it. Yeah, that was really it. Like those, those were the main characters, man. We named everybody that was the main characters of action movies because I don't even think Harrison Ford became an action guy to the nineties. Or when did uh, I mean well, Indiana Jones Bill, come out? Bill Dukes too. Bill Dukes. Yeah, Bill Dukes. Oh well, yeah, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. It was in the eighties. Harrison Ford was one of them. Yeah, because he did um. He did a few of them. What was the one that he had with? I'm about to say Passenger 57, but it ain't Passenger 57. It's another one that he the had. Fugitive. When he was on a, huh? I'm talking about the Fugitive. The Fugitive, yeah. Dope. Ass I mean, movie. I know that was a 90s joint, but he was that still. That was 90s, but yeah. Hey, that movie was dope as fuck, man. Right. But I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? At the, like, at the time, Action movies were the thing. Like when you talking about when you talking about um, the the graphics, the budgets. You know what I'm saying? The um, 
you know what I'm saying, where like the blockbuster films was. Mm -hmm. Those, I mean, well, shit, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise was doing, you know what I'm saying, Top Gun around that time. Yep. Top Gun came out in 86. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. And I mean, the, the dudes that played James Bond around that time, I guess you could say, you know what I'm saying, you know. Uh, 80s, so would that be Sean Connery? Uh, yeah, Sean Connery, yep. I'm trying to think what uh Christopher Lambert, I think Highlander came out in 70 something, 80 something. He was one of them. Who the hell played my guy? Oh man. Oh, Bruce Willis at the 90s. Was was Knight Rider in the 90s or was that the 80s? Nah, I think Knight Rider was like 70s, 80s. Well, uh uh damn, what's his name? David Hasselhoff. Nah, Hasselhoff was more famous for uh, Baywatch, though. He was, but I mean, I know, I he know. Was, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know what you're saying, but he went. No, Hasselhoff wasn't in Knight Rider. Yes, he was. No, man. Yes, he was, man. I swear, Hasselhoff was not in Knight Rider, bro. Yes, he was, man. Look that shit up, man. He's the original Knight Rider, my guy. Damn, that is Hasselhoff. Wow, I tried to tell you, man. That's crazy. I remember, man, me and my sister used to watch that shit all the time. Like, the action shit me and my sister used to watch was yeah. um, was uh, Knight Rider and um, MacGyver. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I remember Baywatch. I remember he used to be on Baywatch. No, oh, how the fuck did I forget about Mr. T? Yeah, Mr. T. Yeah, Mr. T. Yeah, man, the 18. Yeah, man. I pity the fool. But yeah, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? At that time, like, action was the go-to genre, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, wrestling was big at that time. You know what I'm saying? It was really, like, gaining the audience that it was, you know what I'm saying? That, well, it's not as big as it is now. But at the time, I think the popularity was was bigger than what it is now. Um, yeah. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's when you had, like, household names like Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, Ric Flair. Mm -hmm. uh, Ultimate Warrior, you know what I'm saying? You had a a, a slew of wrestlers Sting. that were, well, nah, Sting wasn't as popular then. Yeah. Sting became popular in yeah. like the '90s. He well, he was a wrestler, but he he just didn't get that his fame to like the '90s. But you know what I'm saying? You had like Andre the Giant, you had Arn Anderson, um, Bret Hart. About, and yeah, that's how I about to say Bret Hart. Yeah, and Shawn you know Michaels. Saying? Nope, Shawn Michaels was more so the '90s. Yeah. He came, he was coming up in the eighties, but like in the nineties, that's when he hit with um D Generation X and all them, like the Heartbreak Kid and all that. Like uh, cause Stone Cold, he was he was wrestling at the time, but he didn't get his to the nineties. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, like in specifically the eighties, you had um, damn, you ain't even had a Road Warriors then. You had like. Superfly Snooker and all them, like you had the older, older wrestlers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, before it became like before when it was back, like when it was WWF, like before you know what I'm saying, before all the all the fame and, and, and glitz came with it, man. But yeah, like the eighties was the the time for action. Nineties was too. Nineties was the mm -hmm. time for action. Nineties was a little bit different because you know what I'm saying the technology got a little bit better, so they was able. Yeah. To a little bit more, but to me, the '80s was like the 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 great action movies was in the '80s. They had the they had the joints. Yeah, and y'all, I know it seemed like we made a mockery of this shit. It's it's really a good movie. It just right. it's just funny going back looking at like how different things were back then, and mm -hmm. it's just like I think that once you get a shot, oh, like, I didn't mean to cut you off. I forgot about Mel Gibson. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people ain't fucking with him now, but yeah, nice. Kurt Russell too. Oh, yep, Kurt Russell. Yeah. So Patrick, uh, Patrick Swayze, did Patrick Swayze. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, yeah, like it's it, it's just funny going back looking at a movie from 1985. But I mean, the storyline was good. I thought that the script was good. It was a lot of those little those little moments where they would say shit and it'd be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause back then. Like that was the shit, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like 
like, yo, you know what I like best? What the price, and then just steal that shit. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, like back then that shit was hit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I I just thought that a lot of that a lot of that stuff was dope, man. So um, I so we ready we ready for fire flames? Yeah, but before we do, um, because I wanted to make a point on on top of the point that you was making, it was definitely fire because every one of them had, you know what I'm saying, like they had that the base ingredients for an action movie. You know what I'm saying? It had to be a hot girl, you know what I'm saying, that, that usually was in the movie, and then it had to be um some sort of chase scene and then yep. some sort of explosion scene. Mm -hmm. A gunfight and then the big finale, like a fist fight. And then after that, like as long as you had that in the action movie, you can never go wrong. Yep. All those things is the special ingredients to it. And this movie had all of it. Yes, it had way more than, than all of them. That nigga was carrying a log down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into fire flames, man. Yoga fire. Yoga flame. All right, so um, I'll go first on this one. Listen, I told S. Dot he's some bullshit for making me watch this movie, man, because he know how I get when I see old movies on an HD or a 4K TV. I start seeing <laughs> shit I shouldn't see, man. It's, that's how I found out about the strings on fucking uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. So, um, man, listen, this was this was a classic action movie. Um, my first time seeing it, but it's not my first time seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm very aware of who Arnold Schwarzenegger is. Um, and not only that, I'm very aware of um, of his story and his popularity at this time, too. So, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Knowing that he made a movie like this, I'm sure this was probably one of those, like, towards low-budget movies to where they just threw him in and they knew that people would go see it because it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he did a great job in it and, you know, he don't really have to do much in the action movie, but, you know, pick shit up and throw it or make something explode or shoot a gun or something. And he did that very well. Um, Ray Don Chong, she did a great job. Great one-liners, like you stated. Alyssa Milano, even though she didn't really, um, do too much of nothing, she, you know, since she played her part, she did a great job. She was being like the annoying kid that didn't nobody really like, but they was like, oh man, don't hurt the kid. So she did a great job in that. And it's crazy to see that she, you know what I'm saying, like has been acting for so long. She's mm -hmm. been acting since like the 80s. So she's been really doing her thing. Um, but yeah, man, good to see Bill Dukes. You know what I'm saying? It's always great to see Bill Dukes in the movie. Um, the cast was all right. It wasn't like a, a major cast. I enjoyed the movie for what it was. Like you said, I had a whole bunch of good laughs just, you know what I'm saying, looking back on all the things that they did in the movie to make it look as believable as possible at that time. And, you know what I'm saying, it was it was well put together. Like you said, the script was actually great. The fact that, you know what I'm saying, he had some stuff come back from his past to hunt him. And, you know what I'm saying, he did what all action heroes do at that time and they get busy. So I ain't going to lie, man, I'm going to give it a four. <clears throat> that's what's up man and i'm gonna i'm gonna follow that forward with you man like but it's different for me because like i've been watching this movie since a kid <laughs> so i've seen it at the height of it mm -hmm. um well at the height of it like in the 90s because i think that commando look i don't know how it was seen you know throughout the 80s but like the 90s man it, it was really a time for action movies like I seen a ton. Like obviously, you know, I'm a horror guy, but mm -hmm. I watched a lot of horrors and a lot of action movies in the '90s. And like, just from the people that I was around, like everybody fucked with Commando. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I was young, so, so man, I'm I'm gonna give it a four. I I, I like the cast. Um, you know what I'm saying? Um, Ray uh Ray Don. You know what I'm saying? That was that was, that was one of my crushes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That I had, man. I thought I thought that she was just gorgeous I didn't know, in this. I didn't know she was squeak from color purple. I had no idea. Yeah, she was in the no color idea. purple. She was Harpo's mm -hmm. girlfriend. No, I did not know that. Yeah. No idea. But um, but she did a great job. Like I said earlier, man, I felt like she had a she had a lot of one liners, man, that was good in this. Um um, you know, Alyssa Milano, everybody, I mean, pretty much Noah Patron, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, 
to the end of time, she's going to be known for you know her character on Charm. Mm-hmm. Like that, that, that's just what it is. Um, and she did a really good job as a kid. Like you said, the cast. There's a few people that ended up other than Bill Dukes, but there was a few others that you know had some noticeable parts in other movies. If you're really a movie watcher, mm-hmm. um, the dude that played Sully. You know what I'm saying? I seen him in a couple of things. Um. Oh uh, yeah, Ben Hyatt, man, he's been in all kind of movies, bro. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, the cast, like you said, like I, I think that this was a movie because, like, dude, dude, he's coming right off of Terminator. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, for him to put this out, like, I, I don't know if they knew. I mean, look, depending on where you grew up at and the household you was in, I mean, for me. It had an impact in my life, you know, but for you never seeing it, you know, it didn't impact you. So it's a little different. So, but I think that they didn't know that the impact was going to kind of be what it was. But like, I've always fucked with this movie, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a four, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Um, Yeah, man. Uh, You guys at home, if you're listening, make sure, you know what I'm saying? If you get a chance to go check out Commando, hit us up on those socials and let us know what your Fire Flame rating is. So, you know what I'm saying? Moving on to Coming Soon. Coming Soon. Coming Soon. Um, We got a documentary, man. Um, Why Did You Kill Me? Uh, This documentary is on, I believe it's Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Netflix. It's about um a lady who is murdered but her family uses social media to find the killer. And it gets interesting. If you like Don't Fuck with Cats, you're going to also like uh Why Did You Kill Me? So, um if you guys get a chance, check that out before Friday. Um come back and then uh here's review it. Yeah, man, I, I seen it like around the time that it came out. So, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to watch it again. But uh, it was wild, man, how they just used MySpace to basically track down, you know, a person that killed they, uh, you know, a family member there. So yeah. that was wild, man. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Like... Watching... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just going to say it's going to be interesting watching it again because, like, that, that shit was mad crazy. No, it really was. Like, this shit was, like, catfishing. Um and like online sleuthing all in one. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is pretty different, man. Um, it was it was an interesting story though, just the way that you know what I'm saying. Whenever I, it's amazing to see, like whenever you give somebody that opportunity to come up in a in a moment of triumph, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like how they would how they're able to pull it off, like. The the fact that the family had the the brilliant idea to do what they did was was smart as hell. So, yeah, yeah man, and showed up the police, man, didn't they? This just go to show you that the the police really ain't really needed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Like, if you put some of these mugs on the computer, bro, and let them just like type away, they'll find out way more than the police ever will. Police don't be doing nothing. Wow. So, um, <laughs> you said what? No, nah, no, nah, we'll get we'll get into it. We'll get into it next episode. Yeah. Police ain't shit, man. Um, yeah, man. So uh listen, toward the I mean, I said toward. We are at the end of the show, so you already know what to do, man. Make sure you follow us on the social media accounts. Um, you can follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Viewer Nine Pod. You can also follow us on Facebook at VA Pod Watch Group. Um, follow me on Twitter at Scoots Bronson. Also follow me on Twitch at Scoots Bronson TV slash. Mm. Boy, some people <laughs> think I was dyslexic at Twitch TV slash Scoots Bronson. That's on Twitch at Twitch TV slash Scoots Bronson. You can click that. Make sure you hit that follow button. Um, Isolated Society is going to go live November 11th. Be there or be square. Um, This is only on Twitch. And um, you can follow me on um, Twitter as well to watch it, but you won't be able to interact. You won't be able to comment. If you want to comment and get into the conversation that we're having on the panel, 
uh, you have to be on Twitch. <clears throat> so make sure you go to Twitch, follow right now. Um, and that way, when we go live, you guys can uh, get into it, man. And um, that's all I got, bro. Yeah, y'all can catch me at uh, s.foster on IG and Twitter. Same handle, at 28 Minutes or Less Pod on IG. 28 Minutes or Less on Facebook. Like I mentioned earlier, just dropped the pod with Siege. Um, appreciate him jumping on the pod with me. So y'all can find that on all major platforms. Um, you know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all check us out tomorrow. We will be live on the 43 podcast, man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we trying to get it live on more places, but we will be live on uh Scooch Bronson TV on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we have a whole crew this time. Um y'all can follow on on Twitter at official four three pod. Yep. And on IG it is forty three underscore pod. On, uh, on IG, so uh, come fuck with us. We gonna. I don't even know how far we're gonna get, man, because I completely forgot about uh, selection committee. They just they just put it out, man. Yeah, it just you know I think yeah, I think we'll probably, be able to. I think we could fit it somewhere in that top ten. Uh, that, yeah, that, the weekly top ten thing. We just don't, I just just don't know how long that conversation gonna be. Though. <laughs> That's the only thing. But I think but yeah. I think is I I just seen it. Um. It seemed pretty fair, you yeah. know what I'm saying, based off of what the actual rankings are. Um, kind of shocked with the Cincy shit, though. But Yeah, I know. I know. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, That's, it makes sense, though. It does. It does. Sense. It so, does. We can get into it tomorrow, man. Yeah, man. Fuck with us, man, for y'all football fans. For sure, man. Um, yeah. And uh, can't wait to see you guys Friday. Once again, man, make sure you go to twitch.tv slash schools Bronson. Hit that follow button. Follow us on the 4-3. Follow my guy S. Dot on 28 Minutes or Less. Um, follow all our socials. Make sure you follow the view at View and Nine Pod on Instagram or Twitter. And also uh, on Facebook at VA Pod Watch Group. So whichever platform you use the most, make sure you follow us on there. Uh, and with that said, <clears throat> excuse me, with that said, like I said, Hollywood, man, that's a wrap. Cut.